this is man-made mead. Today, we are gonna be talking about degassing your mead, something that um, whenever I first started, I didn't know much about. I don't really uh, feel like I was super comfortable with it at the time. So uh, I have some notes here as I normally do. I will put them down in the description so you can take the link and read them along with me. Um, I just wanna be as accurate as possible. So uh, degassing is something that when I started making, I had no idea about. I simply thought you just put together your ingredients and let it go, and it's kind of silly. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. We have to ensure our mead will complete to perfection by babying it in a sort of way. As the mead goes through the primary fermentation, the yeast will use the oxygen from the mead and turn it into CO2. This CO2, oftentimes, will make its way out of the mead through the airlock during the primary and secondary fermentation stages. However, that doesn't always get all of the CO2 out. Um, there's a clear difference between degassing and oxygenating the mead. The oxygenation process happens when you first start your mead, so when you first have the must um, and it's going into the primary stage. You want to give the yeast plenty of oxygen to feed on and use, their use for their fermentation process. However, after that fermentation process is over, you really don't want any more oxygen in there. Uh, any leftover yeast will use that oxygen and turn it into CO2, which after a certain point it's hard to deal with. So an easy way to degas your mead is to stir it in its container or lightly swirl it in a carboy. Um, some people will simply use a wooden spoon or, to stir, or they might have a tool like a long, it's a, I'll show a picture of it, it's a long metal pole with paddles on the end and you can, you can connect it to a drill. It's pretty cool, something I don't have, uh, it'd be cool to have in the future. Um, a tool like this is great for degassing large amounts of mead uh, as stirring can be strenuous for those large quantities. Um, when you are stirring the mead, you need to look and see if there are any bubbles appearing on the side of the container. If you see these bubbles, that means that some CO2 is leaving the mead. Um, you might also see bubbles rising from the mead itself. This, uh, this means that your process is working and you should continue to do this until the bubbles slow down to almost a halt. This will help rid the mead of CO2. Um, one other way people like to degas is by using a wine saver. What it is, it's, it's a, uh, basically a vacuum for wine. Once you open a wine and you don't drink it all, and then we want to store it again, uh, you put this thing in um, and it will create a vacuum and pull out the oxygen and the CO2 out of that. So people use this for meads and they'll put it on top and then they'll uh, use the vacuum side of things and then actually pull that CO2 out of the mead. So that's probably the most effective way to do it. The wine savers are cheap, maybe about $10. Um, and you can do it on a glass carboy. Um, there are ways to do it on um, fermentation buckets. You could do it with anything. But something like that, creating that vacuum, will pull out all of that CO2, which is great. It's important that you degas your mead because if there's too much CO2, there can be problems with bottling and storing for long periods of time. The CO2 stored in the mead um, will create pressure and then could cause explosions uh, in the future. Um, now, some people do like a little bit of carbonation in their mead, they'll find some bubbling, other people don't. And that's part of the preference. If you don't like the, any, any carbonation in your mead, then you need to try to degas it. If you're okay with a little bit of that CO2 in there, that's fine, just leave it as it is. Um, I highly recommend that you keep your airlocks on the mead as long as possible because this will act as a natural degassing tool. Degassing your mead is something that you have to monitor yourself. So a lot of people will ask, how often do I degas my mead? And the, the truth is there's no perfect answer. The short answer is that you need to try and degas it yourself and see the results. If there's a lot of bubbling occurring after you've done it, then you probably need to do it more or make sure that it's all gone. Um, if there's light bubbling, then most of that CO2 is probably gone and you're probably doing okay. Um, so once you've completed the degassing stage, you should let the mead sit for about uh, another eight to 12 weeks and just, just let it sit, don't do anything else because the mead can get flat after degassing and it might need some time to, to kind of recover. Just like in wine, this is super similar. Wine and mead are really close to each other in the grand scheme of things. And so watching out for those things is important. So to wrap all of this up, in short, you made it to the end of the video, but I'll give you the short of it. 
Um, the gassing should be done after the fermentation process. You can stir, swirl, or use a wine saver to pull off the CO2 out of the mead. You will know this is working by watching to see if bubbles are forming as you're doing one of these methods. Do this as many times as it takes for the CO2 to make its way out of the mead before storing it for a long time. If you don't do this, you can create a problem for yourself in the future when you bottle and let it sit for a long time. Ultimately, like I said, I didn't know much about this when I first started. It is important, it can affect your mead's flavor, and it's not hard. Um, don't assume, like myself, like I did, that you're just gonna start the process and then let it go, and it's just gonna happen. You kinda have to do some things, and I think um, that's just part of making mead, making alcohol, making all these different things. So. I hope this made sense to you guys. Like I said, all these notes are down in the description if you just want to read them. Um, and there are a bunch of other ones. I have a whole bunch of other videos regarding all the different steps to take in mead and all the important things. So if you like this video, um, leave me a comment suggestion for other videos like this. I'll do my research. I love going through this stuff. It helps me out to figure out what I'm doing further. But also, I think it's fun to make these videos for you guys. So. Thank you for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, everything. I would love to see this channel continue to grow and continue to see you guys be involved. So uh, I will see you guys next time. Cheers.